The economy has meant a change in how workers operate, uh, are managed and more. The so-called Uberization of the workplace has also led to a change in traditional employer and employee relationships. Professor Eddie Webster joins me for more. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon, Professor. What would you say is the most glaring change in that employer-employee relationship? Well, um, I, I think what's, um, uh, what's new is, is uh, the way in which um, the platform economy is defining uh, what we traditionally call employees as independent contractors. In other words, as self-employed. So what are the consequences of this for both the employee and benefits? Well, I think it's, it's, it, it, it has significant implications because uh, in terms of our labor law, uh, uh, the, uh, an employee is entitled to certain basic rights, mm. uh, rights to compensation when they're injured, rights to, um, uh, to a voice, uh, uh, rights to certain hours of work and so on. Uh, however, if you, if you define someone as uh, a self-employed, then uh, they're no longer su subject to those rights. And I think that that, uh, that has become uh, a major debate across the globe, actually, because uh, it's being argued that, uh, that the, by some that this is a misclassification, that in fact they are workers because mm -hmm. uh, they are really directed by the app uh, uh, to, to undertake certain tasks and, and as such ought to be defined as employees or workers. Those are two different categories, really. All right. How much of this type of platform work is there in South Africa at the moment? Well, that's an interesting question because uh, at the moment it's quite small. I mean, it's difficult to get accurate figures uh, uh, from our, our labor force data, but, but you know, maybe in, in maybe as little as 1% um, are, are, of, of our employment. But I mean, I think there are two points to note here. Well, the one is that um, it's, it's, it's expanding rapidly. Uh, you know, companies like Uber Eats, for example, uh, who came to the country in 2016, are you know, in, in, uh, increased by many percentage uh, 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 over the last five, six years, and has grown particularly uh, during the uh, COVID-19. Uh, but I, I think that the more important point I, I would emphasize is the fact that um, uh, it's changing maybe the landscape of. Mm. Uh, uh, of, of the economy uh, because it's introducing what I'm what I'm calling the Uberization of work, uh, and the Uberization of work really is, is is shifting away from the traditional notion of uh, of of, a, of 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 an employer and employee into a, a, a much more um, independent, yes, but insecure uh, type of work. Well, as you've written that South Africa needs to take a look at our regulatory frameworks, how should we do this and what examples can we follow from case law both here and abroad? Well, that, yeah, I mean, I think that it's, 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 there is at the moment what I would call a regulatory gap uh, in the sense that you have a new form of work that's emerged arising out of the digital uh, 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 technology and uh, it, it's it, it's it's not at the moment covered by our uh, our labour regime regulatory framework. So uh, it's I mean what's interesting is that um, uh, the judgment at, in the UK uh, Uber versus Aslam earlier this this year uh, was quite clear that these uh, this type of work is actually uh, these are employees and therefore should be covered by mm. basic uh, uh, minimum wage uh, uh, and all the kinds of regulations that cover, cover them. Uh, in fact, many countries uh, are, in fact, doing this already. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, many parts of Europe are beginning to extend insurance, uh, uh, compensation, because a lot of accidents take place and uh, are starting to, 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 to extend that. So I think the... The, for me, I, you know, the, the starting point really should be a, a conversation. Let's call it a social dialogue between these new form of, uh, of work that's emerged, uh, uh, the government, which is a kind of key player here, and, and, and the companies themselves to, to, to work out you know, what would be a, a way in which uh, the voice of these 
these uh, this new form of work and, and new type workers could be heard. Mm. Speaking of those kind of workers, you've written in Business Day Live about how you invited food couriers to the University of the Witwatersrand campus to listen to the research undertaken by Fikire Masikane, who's a sociology graduate, and how about 36 years ago you did the same thing with mine workers and the person who'd end up as our president. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice one. Thank you. Uh, we, yes, I mean, uh, you know, uh, 30. What well, was 1985? What is that? 36 years ago. Uh, the, the, you know, the uh, our president was um, uh, uh, had recently set up the uh, National Union of Mine Workers. This, this uh, two years before, and of course, you know, interesting thing about the mine workers is that they were also very precarious. Uh, uh, you know, had had these short-term contracts, uh, and indeed, most importantly, uh, they were largely uh, of. of um, uh, cross-border migrants, you know, from 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 uh, uh, Mozambique, uh, from Lesotho, etc. Uh, so, in, in some uh, curious way, um, you know, 34 uh, uh, years later, I, I found myself uh, with a similar category of worker, um, uh, namely the, the platform platform workers. And uh, uh, an important thing, you know, and the big difference uh, 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 in in the case of. Um, of Mr. President Ramaphosa's uh, men, uh, uh, mine workers, the big difference was that, that, that there were employers present. Uh, mm. And when um, when uh, uh, the mine workers arrived uh, very raucously uh, at bits, um, singing their songs and waving their sticks and so on, um, there were employers there uh, at the Chamber of Mines, uh, the, the mine owners. And, and of course, they were very hostile to the idea of um, giving a voice to the mine workers at that stage. After all, we are the height of a pint day. But uh, uh, they eventually, of course, came around and, and entered into uh, dialogue and agreements. And now we have uh, 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 a Mine and Safety Act. And it's very interesting, and I, I want to mention that point, that in 1985, 600 men died underground. That's just fatalities. Uh, last year, there were 58. Now, I mean, of course, the size of the workforce is, is declined, but I think the key point really is that um, uh, it was out of that um, research and, and, and that confrontation, if you like, of, of employers and employees that uh, a solution emerged, uh, mm. uh, 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 and that was a, a new form of legislation amendment to the Act which gave the men the right to refuse to work in dangerous conditions. And I think that's what, what's, that's what was missing um, when we met uh, at Wits Campus two weeks ago. Uh, were, were there, there were no employers uh, mm. because they claim that these, uh, these men and, and a few women are, are, are self-employed. And I think that's really the challenge that faces us is, is whatever you want to define them, they, the, 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 uh, the companies are stakeholders and they need to get into a conversation with each other about what, what, a, what a fair and just uh, a reward and conditions of uh, labor should be. Professor Eddie Webster, thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon. It's time for a short break. When we come back, we're going to be taking a look at the Africa market.